Hey, what's up, everybody? Cecil here. I got a bonus episode for you guys today. Huh? How about that? Uh, I decided to listen to the newest episode of The Draftsman, which is Proco and Marshall's uh, podcast. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it here, but if you guys want to check it out, I highly recommend it. Go on YouTube, look up The Draftsman. Boom. There you go. Uh, I decided if I'm going to listen to this thing, I might as well have some fun and challenge myself. So I'm going to paint two portraits and I painted one. I started with Stan and when I was in the middle of the sketch, my brain said, Hey man, uh, if you post this online, Stan might see this. And if you do a really loose gestural poopy portrait, he's going to judge you. And I went, Whoa, I can't have that. Not doing that. So I spent the entire podcast just painting Stan. Not just the entire podcast, but a half hour after that. So I spent an hour and a half on this thing that I wasn't going to put any time into. And I was just trying, whatever, whatever. doesn't matter. I was only working on my comic today, so it's not a big deal. So uh, I had to source the reference. I thought, well, this will be easy, right? Like Stan's got a billion followers. So I get in line, figured there'd be tons of reference. I only found three images that I thought would be fun to paint. None of them were great. None of them really spoke to me. So I just randomly chose this one. Well, it it wasn't, it wasn't completely random. I guess I I looked at the lips and I said, all right, there's some cool stuff going on there. I can play with it, exaggerate it. You'll see. Um, Also, I, I put the reference next to the painting for like five seconds at the end of this video. So hopefully the stuff that I'm talking about, you guys can look at, you can see what I was talking about. Um, hopefully it, it makes a little bit of sense that way. I don't know. Anyways. So reference done. Taking a look at it. Start my sketch. First thing I do is simplify the contours. That's my, that's my first choice in anything I do. If I'm, I'm doing a caricature, if I'm doing a portrait, uh, if I'm doing my own characters, I always look for ways to simplify my contours. I didn't used to do that, but it's something that I noticed a lot of my favorite artists like Jim Murray and, and, and um, uh, Simon Bisley and a lot of those guys did. And I thought, man, if they do it, I should do it. And, and as soon as I started trying it, I really liked the impact it had on my art. Um, not only could I use longer lines uh, that kind of led your eye through the piece and help tell my story better, but I could also add a lot more energy to the piece which is just big, quick, wham lines, right? So in this one, I pulled the hair above the ear out and made a really sharp point on it because I feel like the sharp angle changes add a lot of structure and energy to the piece and then did a straight line from that through the ear, down the neck, down the collar, one big line, woof, done. A lot of energy, simple contour. I jumped to the other side of the head, same thing. Extended the hair out, added a nice point to it, line down the side of the face from the hair, uh, right down and converging with that first line. And that's the, the next thing is adding converging points. I've heard it over and over again. Again, it was another thing I didn't use a lot, but as soon as I started using it, I realized what a difference it made to my art. If you don't do that now, try it yourself and see what I mean. It really will add a lot to your pieces. So we have simplified contour. We have converging lines and they're, and they're all over the piece, by the way. It's not just the outsides of the head. I mean, Um, I did do the uh, shadow below the lip and the Adam's apple and then changed where the shirt buttons up um, so that the point of that all feeds into that same line and it kind of runs down to the same converging point. But you can have multiple converging points and and that's fine. But the thing is, is you just don't want two lines to kind of run parallel with each other out to infinity. You want them to come together at some point. And so I I try to do that with everything everywhere. So then after that, the next thing I do is I think about my shapes and mainly trying to add triangles. Uh, When I draw anything, it's a lot of triangles. Like if I'm I'm doing an arm, I shoulder to elbow is a triangle, elbow to wrist triangle. I, I, I think triangles are obviously very structural, but it's easy. You can get a simple read from it. Uh, I just, I just, I like how it looks. I like the effect that it has on everything. So I go in 
now and I start even playing around with that contour and my shapes and seeing where I could fill in more triangles. You'll see like where the hair kind of, I don't know, puffs out at the front. I, look, I've, I've been bald for years, man. I don't know what you call hair other than hair. I, I don't, I'm sure it has a name, whatever. It's the puffy bit up front to me. That's a big triangle, you know? Um, I put triangles in my shape design. Now, one problem that I had with this piece was because I was so in my head about uh, Stan seeing it, uh, I think I over-rendered it. Uh, at least at least past the point that I was trying to make with it, I over-rendered it. And um, that's not something I would normally do. Usually my, my shape design is a lot chunkier and a lot more readable, and I like that. I like big, not necessarily big, but I like chunky, really readable shapes. And, and, and I sort of, I don't know, over-rendered this piece beyond that. But whatever. Everybody makes mistakes, right? Adding triangles. There's um, some easy ones right away. You, you can see the, the, the plane below the eyes, the Rembrandt triangle. Those are there. But even in the, in the anatomy and everything, I, I try to add it. So uh, look at the nose. I took the shape of the nose. And again, you're going to have to uh, compare the two at the end of the video. But I took the shape of the nose and tried to make it more triangular. Um, I took the eyebrows and tried to make them even more triangular, although they already were pretty good. Um, the, the shape of the lips strengthen the triangles there um the shapes around the lips strengthen the triangles there the bounce light on the side of his face is just like a stretched out triangle uh the planes of the forehead i divided that up into basically two triangles one facing up one facing down on the other side of uh where the plane turns above the eyebrow right off of that highlight uh, made that from the hairline down another triangle you know the, you get the point trying to add a lot of triangles to add a lot of structure that's very important to me and especially on a male figure because um, a lot of straight lines, a lot of hard edges, and a lot of uh, structure tends to read more masculine. And that just helps you in your overall sale of a character if you can do that. So there's that. So we got, we got simplified contour, converging lines, and we got the triangles uh, for structure. And it also makes your shape design a little bit easy. Plus, if you're doing a lot of clothes and it's kind of ambiguous and you don't got good reference for the wrinkles or anything, triangles, man. Triangles always work in clothes. That's an easy one. Okay. So once I have all that stuff done, then I can start playing around with the anatomy. Uh, in this case, his lips were already kind of making that shape. So I just played it up more. I felt like that was the only part in this, now I, I added more gesture to the piece as a whole to try to add more energy too, but I felt like in the lips I could really play that up and that would help me push the emotion further. And so uh, a lot of straights in that area um, to help with the uh, uh, draw your attention there and kind of exaggerating them, pushing them over a little bit further off the center line to also help kind of show that there's a movement or an action happening there, right? So uh, if you're trying to do something with the anatomy and you're struggling with it, don't try to make it up because chances are if you don't know the anatomy, and trust me, I don't know a lot about anatomy. I, everybody thinks I do, but I have a lot of weaknesses myself. The difference is, is I'm, I will go and get my anatomy book out and look at the muscles, see where they connect, see how they uh, tie together and then you have a better idea of how you can uh, rubberize them, push them and pull them and move them around. If you try to do it yourself, you might get lucky, but if you don't, it's just going to look wonky and you're going to ruin your whole thing. Why would you want to do that? So don't. Just get your book out and look it up. We all have anatomy books. Well, use them. <clears throat> Once I have all the anatomy and everything done, then I can kind of choose where I want to um, have my center of attention. Usually I only pick one area. In this one, I kind of picked two. Um, you know, it, I don't know. It should have been the eye. I probably should have just left it with the eye. But all the action was happening in the lips. So I should have probably either picked the eye, where you see like I added all the, the wrinkles and stuff to the eye. I should have probably left that. Um, or I could have just left it as the lip. And that would have been fine too. Just left the lips as center of attention. I don't know. I made two kind of focal points in it. Once I have that picked out, usually like the last stage 
will be I'll reevaluate all my colors. Uh, I like to use a lot of color. I usually like to use a lot of high chroma. So I'll reevaluate that and see if there's anywhere else that I should throw in some color notes to kind of <clears throat> overall harmonize the piece, right? Uh, you'll see I have like purples uh, to complement the yellows. I have greens to complement the reds. I have blues to complement the oranges and so on. So I, I really will do that. And anywhere I can get away with throwing in some extra color notes, uh, again, to where it won't look contrived or throw off the balance of the piece, I'll do it. Once I have that done, then if I'm doing digital, I will do, I'll flatten everything down and I'll do a hue saturation layer and I'll bump that thing all the way up because sometimes you can have, a, well, you're not you, me, I can have a tendency to paint things a little bit desaturated when I'm looking at uh, a color reference. In this case, I was looking at the reference of him and I can stick to those colors a lot if I'm not careful and, and don't consciously say I want to explore the colors. Uh, most of the time, I'll black and white the image so that I don't have that and I, I'm only working off values. But in this case, I looked at the color image the whole way through. So I did the hue saturation layer, bump it all the way up. And what happens is when you see the extreme and then you start to scale it back, a lot of times you'll find that your saturation can be well above what you thought was saturated already and look even cooler. And so in this case, I did that and it really wasn't that dramatic of a difference. I don't even know if you guys could see me flipping back and forth. You'll, you'll, you can definitely see when I bump it all the way up, but then I came down. I think I only ended up going to like, I don't know, seven or eight. It, it wasn't big. Uh, I was pretty happy with it, but I do it anyways. It, it never hurts to check. The other, the other thing that I did too, that I think adds a lot to this, I, I didn't point out, was I tried to bring the forehead closer to the camera because I thought that served the expression a lot more. And it also gave me an excuse to help that overall triangle shape that the whole head neck uh, becomes one big triangle. So, all right, that's it. I hope you learned something and I hope you had fun watching if not. So thanks a lot. And don't forget to check out The Draftsman, look it up on YouTube and I'll catch you guys next time. Later.